Hey folks, how's it going? I'm Josh. Today we're checking out another 8 out of 10 cats. I know a few of you guys suddenly start watching the show. That's going to be a while down the line. Right now I'm reacting to 7 shows on Patreon. And I'm going to be reacting to more movies soon. So right now this is down the line. So hopefully you guys are okay with me just continuing the clips for now. Because a lot of people still request these. So there's a lot more people requesting this and not watching them. So I have to go with the majority of people who want me to continue to check out the clips. So let's go ahead and jump into it folks. And we will talk about it in the end. Are you a fan of word games? Well, to be honest, Jimmy, I don't think that's any of your business. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, apologies, Peter. <laughs> Sorry if I crossed the line there. I'm... Oh, yeah, he's on Parks. I know I recognize him somewhere. He was on a couple of those Any Park words you're hoping will come up tonight? Abdicates. <laughs> He's trying to say he wants Jimmy to give up his throne. I'm with Peter. Is that what That's what it means, right? One of my favorite words, which is retro mingency. Retro mingency. <laughs> is that what it used to be, like a big bush? Is that a retro? <laughs> it means peeing backwards. <laughs> Sucking it back in. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, peeing backwards? I think apparently rhinos and hares can sort of pee so that it kind of, and I didn't research this one, but it kind of, you know, just goes backwards. So it goes back. Well, I could do yeah. that. I just... <laughs> <laughs> just... Susie, what, what could they have got? I had nougat for six. I got a nine. There's a nine-letter word there. Nine-letter okay. word. Abdicates. <laughs> <laughs> You were voted the 57th hottest man in the world by Attitude magazine. Fact. <laughs> yes. Yes, Attitude magazine is gay literature. I was voted the 57th hottest man in the world by them last year. Brad Pitt is at 60. I'm hotter than Brad Pitt. <laughs> 57th, no. Yes, I'm 57th hottest. Man, it, how, out of how many? How many men are in the world? Just to, really put that, three, <laughs> to really put the man's achievement into context, three, three seven, billion out of three billion. Yeah. Wow. Benedict Cumberbatch is at 69. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is one of your recent tweets. Um, fuck it. I'm going to get ducked up to fuck. Me and my little sonny are going to treat him to a nice bit of stale bread. Hashtag old school. <laughs> yeah, I took that to a nice little, uh, little pond. OK. <laughs> I, mean, I, I get the setup of the situation. You're going to feed the ducks. It's the next tweet that really confused me. It was, well, that was weird. Found a lovely pond stroke lake. Not a fucking duck inside. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they were shy. Or maybe they was arrogant. Pricks. <laughs> Could they have done any better? Well, we think we may have a nine. Uh, can we... Can we... <laughs> check, uh... Yeah. yeah. Uh, Abdicates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so at the end You're of that, Sean is going to have four points. <laughs> it says here in the 80s, Susie collected rocks. And there's me thinking that being the resident lexicographer on Countdown was tragic. <laughs> pet rocks? Don't you remember pet rocks? Well, if you couldn't afford a real pet, you had a pet rock. <laughs> John, I said you were the most boring, but it's bloody close. <laughs> <laughs> Susie, are there any accents you find annoying? Um. Well, there was these polls, aren't there, of the accents and how <laughs> intelligent... <laughs> There's always these how bloody polls. Yeah. <laughs> Susie's gone very UKIP recently. <laughs> polls, yes. Polls, polls. Polish people, yes. No, no, polls. <laughs> and they ask people how intelligent they think uh, someone is, depending on their accent. And Brummy right. always comes last. And silence is always, it always rates better than a Brummy accent. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. that's why I got rid of it. Did you have one? No, not really. <laughs> I was born better. <laughs> I think Susie's funniest moment was she was doing the origin of gingerly, you know, to act gingerly. And she got to the point where you put a piece of ginger in a horse's ass, <laughs> and she couldn't finish it. She tried to do it about five times and ended up cutting it out because she couldn't get through it. <laughs> ginger 
What? <laughs> you, <laughs> you messed me there. That's what we thought. If you ginger someone up, you pet them up a bit, and it used to be putting a piece of, well, it didn't have to be ginger, but it could be anything, into a horse's, yeah. In, and into a horse's? To keep its tail erect and to give, you know, make it sprightly. What? <laughs> Who's the first guy who discovered that? Right. <laughs> Could I have done any better? I've got a nine. <laughs> oh my god, this is not gonna stop. I think it's a word, but I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Abdicates. <laughs> Abdicates. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Nine letters. Yeah. I've got some poems, if you want me to, um, to read a poem. Sounds good. Okay, so I've got a, I've got a poem about, um, do you want one about a witch? A poem about love? A poem about cubs. Witch. Witch. <laughs> so this is a poem about the witches, I guess. A witch frigged herself off with her broom handle. <laughs> That's not on the syllabus, is it? <laughs> Which frigged herself off with her broom handle. Her cat watched on, tired of it all. <laughs> I'm, I'm published. Published poet. This is sort of lore came from witches would put drugs on broomsticks is it, is it and stick it in a vagina rhyme? where I women would rhyme. to I've get high. I've never made one rhyme. Do you not? No. Is it on purpose or could you not? No, I've tried. <laughs> I spend, what I do is I sit down for an hour trying to make one rhyme and then I can't do it, so then I write that sort of thing. <laughs> you could have had, like, wigged, bigged, digged. You're going to need a rhyme for splinter for uh, verse two. <laughs> well, I've smashed it, mate. I've absolutely smashed it. What, what have you got? Oh, I went with oh, I had trainer first. You had that within, before the, all the letters were selected, he had trainer. And then okay. I've got, um, tenurial. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> what, <laughs> tenurial. Fantastic. What word no, is he no. trying to say, Susie? <laughs> he said it. <laughs> tenurial. Oh. And, and tenurial it's means... Brilliant. It's all to do with the tenure of land, the holding of land. Yeah. How did you know that? I don't know. I'm clever bollocks, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> Peter, Susie, could they have done any better? Uh, well, we, we got a couple of sevens. Resound, uh, devours, sounder, and an eight. Abdicate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hang on, no, no, no. Abdicates. Abdicates <laughs> nine. <laughs> Abdicates. OK, so Sean and James have 29. Every time. I've ever been on this program, I get the next day, I'd say at least six tweets from people saying they've found someone who looks a lot like me. This is just a very common setup. And <laughs> so I put together some of the best. We start with a classic. It's uh, <laughs> E.T. era Steven Spielberg. <laughs> it was, uh, That's the one on the yeah. left, yeah? <laughs> Alf. <laughs> This is a good one. It's a ceramic <laughs> lion from a museum yeah, in it. Scotland, someone said to me after the last time I was on this show. Uh, this Antarctic explorer. <laughs> I'll be honest, that is actually me. I just wanted to dress up as an Antarctic explorer. So I put that in there as a curveball. And then um, I get told a lot I look like uh, the late Keith Moon, the amazing drummer from The Who. Uh, but what's interesting about this one is that uh, John Entwistle, the bass player from The Who, looks a lot like uh, Joe Wilkinson. So this is a picture of not me, <laughs> not Joe Wilkinson, hanging out. I travelled down through Egypt and then I, I, I sat on a beach leaning against a, um, another poet and I wrote this. <laughs> it's about my travels. Bedecked in white shawls, a local tailor floated across the hot sand on his camel. Then in brackets, Otto. Irrelevant. <laughs> Nearby, a handsome Englishman. <laughs> fingered an Egyptian girl against a pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> they said I could uh, read something, read something from a book, you know, as long as it had some kind of literary merit you know it's a show about words and everything so um Don't i thought i'd read you. an extract from the morrissey autobiography just because <laughs> i'm a fan and you know it's just really it's really interesting and it's extremely well written so um here's my take on the 
Morrissey autobiography. <laughs> I think the genius of the show was that it did exactly what it said on the tin. Men behaving badly. It was about two men whose behavior was, well, let's just say it left a lot to be desired. I remember those days very fondly. It was really good fun. In fact, it was brilliant. <laughs> Sitting on the sofa, watching porn on the telly, having a couple of beers, talking about wanking, trying to cop off with Leslie Ash. And then the car would pick us up to take us to the studio and we'd have to film the show. <laughs> I don't really keep in touch with Clunesy anymore, but he's off being all successful and everything. He was brilliant in gravity. <laughs> he looks very handsome these days. I think he might have had his ears dubbed. <laughs> Good on you, Clunesy. <laughs> oh, come on here for a bit of light art. <laughs> A bit of light-hearted weather and film-based bands. The All whole Morrissey thing went over my head. I know he is. Taylor is um, <laughs> music. What did Susie come back with? Never heard with, him talk, though. With, um, I needed a hyphen between light and hearted. <laughs> <laughs> is that true, though? Do I need a hyphen? Yeah. Why? <laughs> Problem is, I just say light-hearted. How do you say hyphen? How do you say the hyphen bit? You don't. What's the point? <laughs> Why is there a hyphen needed for that? Because Susie says to us. Exactly. I'm yeah, not... <laughs> oh, sorry, I've sat here quiet. <laughs> oh, yeah, you say you used to be a teacher, right? Or you used to be a principal? I question dense authority when I'm on this team. That's the yeah. first thing. Any more jokes about Dictionary Corner being boring? Someone's going to get fucking hurt. <laughs> I won't spit on you when we're having sex tonight. <laughs> I'm looking fast. So yeah, I enjoyed that, man. That wasn't as funny as some of the other ones I watched, but like, um, maybe because this was this wasn't clipped the way where like you know focus on a particular person, whether it was like uh, Joe Wilkinson or or uh, or anyone like any of the uh, any of the norms, you know what I mean? Where they like, uh, I'm gonna forget the names already, so I'm just not even gonna butcher them. But yeah, it, it wasn't really kind of like peppered around different around, around different people. And I usually like the ones a little more when they focus on like one person making like a lot of jokes throughout the show. Because, uh, you know, it's not so mixed up of a comedy style. And the only person I recognized uh, that was talking, because I think this was, is it, it's, it's not Greg Davis, is it? Is it Greg Davis? I think it's Greg. Like, Joe Wilkinson didn't really say anything. He was pointed out, but I think Greg didn't say anything either. I, I'm pretty sure it's Greg Davis. Let me double. I know I'm probably get this wrong, and I'm going to um, get butchered in the comments. I can't find him. Well, I guess it really doesn't matter. Um, but I think it was great. Like, yeah. Mm, boo. Whatever. I can't find him. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So, yeah, I still enjoyed it, though. Uh, I, I guess I prefer when they use it kind of, like, focus on, like, one funny person, though. Like, when they clip those together really, really well. Uh, yeah. All right, guys. That is all for this one, man. Hopefully, you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. And I'll see you in the next one. Later.